Welcome back, everybody. Here I am, Ezekiel III, sitting with my friend Rachel. How are you doing? Sales, please. I'm so and uh, we're sitting here with Alex Brewer and a legend of comics, one of my personal heroes, Mr. Garth yeah. It's good to see you, man. Thank you. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> we got a nice turnout for you guys today. Right on. Absolutely, this is the place for it. We're going to actually talk about World of Tanks. Yes, uh, just to kick it off, we're really excited to talk about this. Uh, over the last year, we've really leaned into storytelling in our game. This, this, this game has no lore, for, per se, or no, no, no narrative. So last year, we were lucky enough to team up with Garth, and we did World of Tanks Rollout, mm -hmm. uh, the comic book series, which is still available at the Dark Horse booth. <laughs> um, ha, but that said, we really uh, had to adhere to our core values, uh, which are historical accuracy sure. and uh, technical accuracy. And we didn't want to do something with dragons or you know time travel or anything silly. So we went to Garth and got a truth-based story based on actual incidents, and uh, that really you know really fed, fed into the genuine nature of the book. Absolutely. And I would imagine with so many millions of people, like, you have to be pretty, pretty careful, like, to do things correctly. Yeah, we really do. Uh, our players keep us totally honest. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I sure. mean, fans of tanks are very particular. Right down to the bolt, let yes. me tell you. Right <laughs> down to the bolt. Oh, yeah. But uh, we were able to do something else because we've been leaning into the storytelling, like I said. And on console for PS4 and Xbox exclusively, we've introduced uh, World of Tanks war stories. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're able to bend the history a little bit by presenting uh, chapters sure. of episodic content that rolls out. Yeah. Uh, and it's set in alternative history scenarios, so you can like get your Philip K. Dick man in the high tower on. Right, right, right. Uh, but um, and those are told in a in a way that are it, that's also sequential art. We have motion comics going there. We contacted a lot of other writers, worked with outside writers mm -hmm. to get to uh, give some variety to the talent we use. Not to lean on this genius too too much <laughs> but uh we uh so we've introduced that there's uh three episodes out now and keep uh, keep an eye out for that you can read the story with the comic books and you can play the story uh on xbox and ps4 now, okay. I, I was grilling you on this one and i was like is it its own game is it paid <laughs> dlc you said this just appears uh, in the launcher for, yeah. for people who own World of Tanks. It's there when you boot up, um, and, uh, and y it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> icon. Can't miss you go it. Right on. You can't <laughs> miss it. And um, honestly, I've had a lot of fun playing the game, and this has ramped up my enjoyment for it. Yeah. It's just really cool to not have that pressure of multiplayer. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure for mm. multiplayer competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it just gives you uh, a playground within a story to really uh, really explore the game and get a feel for it. Now, how did you get hooked up with this project? Um, as I recall, Dark Horse got in touch. Um, uh, they said they were putting together the book, Would I Like to Do It? Mm -hmm. And when they explained that there would be no fantasy elements whatsoever and I could basically go with what I wanted to do and just tell a, a proper historically accurate story, I, I thought, yep, that's my, that's what I want to do. That's my meat and drink. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so yeah, it was a no brainer really. Now are you, are, do you have an, uh, do you have an, uh, uh, an affinity for, uh, war stories or? Yeah, very much. Um, I grew up on war comics, uh, okay. because in the, in the part of the UK I grew up in, in Northern Ireland, there was extremely spotty distribution of American comics. So I saw very few, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, British comics were still heavily influenced, uh, I think, by the experience of the Second World War. War comics still sold, and they sold a lot, and there were several titles. One, uh, the one I liked was called Battle. There was another one called Warlord. Um, and that was really what I grew up on. So when you guys, I suppose, were reading superhero stories, mm -hmm. I was reading a lot of stuff about the Second World War and so on. Uh, the attraction. Fun childhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the attraction for me was reading beyond the comics and finding out that a lot of this stuff was based on reality. Right. Yeah. And that that gave me, I think, a taste for military history that survived to this day. And of course, you know, the things come full circle because now I'm writing my own war comics. Right. Sure. Yeah. Now I gotta. Uh, uh, you're you have a particular, I don't know, voice. I guess we'll say you uh, don't no holds barred. I would I would say yeah. as far as that. Is, is that in the world of tanks? Pretty much. Okay. You know, I mean, my, my ethos really is that uh, uh, violence is a horrific thing and, and 
one shouldn't flinch from portraying it as honestly as possible. Right, that yeah. applies to language as well. People bailing out of a burning tank are not going to shout crikey while they're doing <laughs> right. it. And I think... Darn it, I'm on fire! Yes. Oh, heck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, dear, my hands are gone. That yeah. kind of thing. Um, <laughs> right, sure. So I, I, I think you know, it's important as to be as true to that notion as possible. And with, with the comic, we're able to do that. Now we see two covers here. What what is this? What is the difference here? Uh, I can I can I can actually jump in on that. Okay, um, please do. Th this is the cover to issue four. We had Isaac Hannaford do all of our main covers for mm -hmm. the entire series. Did a fantastic job. But the uh, the one you see here, the retro one, was our New York City Comic Con exclusive cover, and we're really mm -hmm. stoked because uh, one of our team members back at the office in Emeryville, uh, Alex Hart was the artist for that. And we're really stoked to have people from our family who love tanks, who love comics, contribute to that. So uh, we were very happy to have that. We're totally stoked with the way it come out, came out. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it again, actually. <laughs> uh, you were talking about the, the effort you guys put in and being as uh, exact as possible in creating the, the tanks in the game and the world in the game. Uh, Garth, is this a, a similar passion for you? Were you enjoying, a, as a fan of, of the literature that you read over the yeah. course of your life, were you as accurate as, as you could be? Uh, very much so, yeah. I mean, that was one of the things uh, reading the war comics I did as a kid taught me was that uh, the more stuff you get right, the more veracity you give the story. The artists and writers I liked as a kid went the extra mile to get that stuff mm -hmm. right. I try to as well, so I don't mind driving the artist crazy with reference. I <laughs> quite enjoy it, really. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I get to do the easy bit. But yes, I think, it, I think it's yet another thing where it's important to get it right. It adds veracity to the story. Yeah. No, I can, just, I can just see fans of there going like, um, actually, it had three <laughs> rivets. <laughs> three rivets, not four. You put four on this tank, there's three. Well, yeah. have well, you talked to any of the fans? Have you had a chance to gauge the reaction to your work? Um, it, as far as I know, it's gone over pretty well. They, I it's mean, been a really strong reaction to players and non-players. At my local comic shop, they pulled me aside and they're like, there's a guy who comes in here every month demanding and asking when it's coming <laughs> in, which is great. Uh, but uh, keep, yeah, our players keep us honest. But one of the things that we're really dedicated to is when we build the tanks in game, we go and we will scour blueprints. We will go to museums and measure between the bolts. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And, <laughs> Which the work totally paid off because we would send those uh, in-game models to the artist, right. and that would really help, you know, inform his his uh, his work on the book. Wow, so this is a really fluid partnership between the game and and you guys working uh, to make everything kind of match up as well as possible. Yeah, I think so. I mean, one of the attractions for me was I didn't have to write from or to the game. I could write a story, and then they yeah. would fit the game to the comic, which I find much more liberating than having to do it the other way around. You know. I would, I would imagine, definitely, yeah. like it, trying, trying to, trying to fit something into, into the other way around would be would pose a lot more difficulties. I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Also, I mean, what, what I find most helpful with World of Tanks is just the incredible degree of research that they've, that they're putting out there. Uh, Nick Moran's videos are, are great, where he actually climbs into the tanks and uh, sits in all the various positions and checks out what it's actually like for the crew. Uh, I mean, very handy for artistic reference, but also it gives you a real insight into what it's like in each particular vehicle. Oh. Yeah, he's, uh, he's our, we call him the chieftain around yeah. the office. Okay. And uh, he has a series of videos called Un like Under the Hatch right. with the chieftain. And he has a huge following in our community and we see it expanding and, and uh, it's, it's talking to him is about World War II and military is like, you know, talking to Moses about the Old Testament. I don't know. Right. He, he's just... <laughs> yeah, he just there. knows, just knows that stuff. So how far, how far along is this comic? Uh, well, all five issues were published last year. Okay. And the, uh, the collection has been out since, I think, February. Okay. And it, it's on sale now. You can pick up a copy at the, the, the Dark Horse booth. Is that right? Yes, yes. There's yeah. a few there. Uh, they okay. told me that it's really running out. That they um, So I would get over there. Not, right. to, not to pimp too hard, but... It's a good book. Th I'm sure it is. Yeah. I, uh, is there is there a way that people can, that are not here can get it? Uh, uh, presumably local comic book yeah, store. Yeah, I was going to say, you can just get it anywhere, right? Yeah, yeah be yeah. like that guy in my comic shop and yeah. go, is this coming in this week? Is it? Is it? <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> and, uh, and Yeah, and online, too. Can I ask, uh, of the stories you covered, of, of the characters that you brought to life in the comics, did you have a personal favorite or one you'd recommend uh, people go out and check out in particular? Um... Beyond the World of Tanks comic, you no, mean? No, no, in particular related to the World of Tanks. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm fond of most of the lead characters. There, there's, uh, there's a misery, one of the, 
th the story is essentially about a British crew and a German crew, and eventually they meet under, of course, the worst possible circumstances. But I'm fond of all of them. Um, they all share an aspect uh, that a lot of my characters do, which is just one damn thing after another <laughs> happens to them. You know, it's like they are just the unluckiest people alive, and it ke and it keeps getting worse. That's something I enjoy pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it takes your comics and your writing to amazing places. I'm, I'm very excited to check this out, knowing you're attached. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, like, I love a good story in video games. Like, that's that's my bread and butter. Is is story based games to play? Can you like? The World of Tanks, once you buy it on console, right, Xbox and PS4. Free to play. Download us right away. Free to play. Yep, on console, on uh, mobile, on PC. You know, we're, we're basically everywhere with, uh, you know, that, that, main, that players mainly gather. And it's free to play. And I could just I get it and play it? Yes, sir. No problems? Absolutely. Okay, so do I have to know about World of Tanks to play it? Um, no. We, we jump in. I mean, there's always a learning curve to every game. Of course. But uh, with, uh, with War Stories, like I mentioned for console, it's mm -hmm. a really nice ramp in for a new player experience. Cool, okay. And uh, with, uh, with World of Tanks on PC and Blitz, you have the benefit of having a very enthusiastic, robust, and encouraging community where they will, you know, there are, there are sections of our community that will really take people under the fold and say, look, you, you kind of charged out there. You don't YOLO. You need to actually, like, you know, have a little strategy and hide and things like that. Cause it's right. Basically, chess at 30 miles an hour. Yeah. Oh my God. And it's it's insane how many oh, yeah. people like, are so just. This is what they do. Well, the upper level of World of Tanks. I mean, it's it's a global esport. It's a highly competitive mm -hmm. play. And so, if you want to put the time into this game, I mean, it it has no ceiling right now. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there anything else that you guys wanted to to promote? Like anything new coming out or? Um, I, just, uh, I say go check out War Stories on console. It's a blast, speaking personally. I have a trailer for it. If we could uh, kick to that on the way out, that'd sure, be dynamite. Absolutely. Totally, man. Uh, well, we're going to kick to the trailer, I guess, if we have it. Is that okay, guys? In my head. A <laughs> single day can change everything. One fall day in 1940, we knew Britain was impregnable, protected by the sea and defended by brave souls on every clifftop. 24 hours later, all we could do was watch as the German forces took the coast and drove their tanks into the heart of the nation. When the blockade began in 1948, we thought the people of West Berlin would be safe. But the Soviets had other ideas. One December day is all it took for the fragile peace to shatter. And once again, the streets were filled with war and death. In 1962, we thought the Cuban Missile Crisis was a bluff. It was bravado, playground bullies flexing their muscles. No one would ever push the button. Then one day in October that year, someone did push it. An island paradise was turned into the epicenter of all-out thermonuclear war threatening our very existence. These are our stories. Now, it's your turn. That was awesome, man. That was really, really cool. Thank you. Uh, there, tell me we got to wrap up, but I just want to say thank you so much for sharing this with us. Uh, if it's free to play, man, I'm gonna go get it immediately when I like first chance I get. Yeah, jump in, everybody, jump in. It's it's a blast. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for being here. I Thank do you. appreciate it. Thanks. World man. Tank Thank War Stories, guys, Garth Ennix, Alex Brewer. Don't go away. We're not even close to being done yet. More coming to you live from the Twitch stage. Hang out. <laughs>